uh, that's very good. Uh, and for some of you other, uh, some of the others that are back, there's been many changes at the school, so in many ways it's a new school for them as well. Particularly if you have children in the, in the grade one to five where things have changed considerably. Mm -hmm. oh, come on in, please. I just want to spend a few minutes talking about uh, a couple of the changes that have taken place in the early childhood because that, that impacts you people the most. Uh, probably the biggest change, as you noticed, is we now have a canteen for our, uh, for our early childhood uh, kids to eat in. Uh, as you know, last year, oh, we, have even, we even have a picture of it, thank you. Uh, as you know, last year, uh, eating outside was, it, was, it, it wasn't exactly the, way, the environment that we wanted our kids to eat in. And so in, in, in building this particular canteen, it's not just a canteen. What we did is we tried to make it kind of a multi-purpose area. When the furniture finally gets in there, this is the final furniture that's going to go in there. There are going to be uh, tables that fold up and roll out of the way, so that that whole space then will be open uh, for doing all kinds of activities. You know, the K-5s have already had an activity in there where, well, there's a, there they are working. Kids have already had an activity in there, a large space where kids can, uh, can apply their learning, uh, collaborate with one another, uh, learn from one another. Also, at the far end of that, uh, you can't see it now, there will be an early childhood library. So instead of, instead of our students having to, go, having to go on a field trip over to the high school library, the books that are pertinent to uh, <coughs> early childhood kids will be right there for them. So they'll be able to go in and, and get books when they need them. Teach, yep, that's okay, thank you. Teachers will have easy accessibility to the, to, to the books. So it, it'll be much better. It's like the Barnes and Noble, you know, you eat and kind of have the library in the same, in the, in the same spot. Uh, days when there's indoor recess and it's raining outside. So tables can be moved out of the way, kids can play in that area. So it's really, really a multifunctional area for our kids and I think very, and, and I think a significant upgrade uh, for our K kids. Uh, the, uh, if you have children in the upper grades, you've heard my spiel about why we changed the uh, uh, grades one to five. If anybody wants to talk about that, that hasn't heard that yet, I'll be happy to talk to you about it. So, those are the changes that we've made. We think they're better. There will be more changes coming in the K classrooms over the next year. Uh, we plan on uh, improving, improving our, our teachers' ability and our students' ability to collaborate with one another and learn from one another. So one, of the, one of the major 21st century skills is collaboration. And children at a very young age have to learn that they can learn from other people, not just teachers. And so we are going to uh, do a little bit of reconstruction within uh, the K-5 and certainly K-3 areas where we're going to open up the wall uh, between the two classrooms and make it removable like we've done in here so that we can make the space more adaptable. Uh, you'll notice the tables are on wheels so that they can be moved around easily so when they want to change configuration they'll be able to do it easily. And you have whiteboards on top of you. And all the tables have whiteboards on the top so no more scrap paper to write things on. You can write right on the table. So all of those things are trying to make Lives a little easier for teachers, and, and the learning environment a little better for kids. So in K, we've done some changes. In grade one to five, we've done many more changes, and you will see that as your children get a little bit older. So without further ado, I'm going to let these young people introduce themselves <laughs> and talk to you about what are they doing. The road to Success. grade one. <laughs> grade one, happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning um, and welcome to our K-5 curriculum. Before we start our presentation, we would like to quickly introduce ourselves. My name is Angie Benise Matos, Professor of Social Studies, K-5 and School. Cristina Albernaz, PLA. Gabriela, sua coordenadora do Departamento de Português. Então, trabalho junto com a Denise Matos e a Denise Turati, que é a nossa diretora. Bom dia, meu nome é Denise, eu sou diretora do Programa Brasileiro. Estamos à disposição, caso tenha alguma dúvida. E this is Jonathan McMullen, and he will also be assisting us with some translations this morning. Sou bem-vindos à nossa opinião sobre cultura. Hoje estaremos dividindo com vocês informação sobre o Jardim 2. Esta é Angie, eu sou Jonathan. Estarei fazendo a tradução para vocês hoje. 
Thank you all. Seriously, thank you so much to Janini, who will be doing a simultaneous translation. If there are any people that would like this, please feel free to be in this area. Um, Angie created this idea that we can do this little demonstration, just truly really to explain or demonstrate. We value all language. This is an international school, um, and we appreciate your support, of course, of learning English for some families. But please know that we are always here to. Uh, we have different resources. Angie is fully bilingual. I am learning Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but each classroom has a bilingual teacher, so our assistant teachers speak both English and Portuguese. Uh, we're always available for our help communication. Yeah. Um, as you know. So overall, our goal in kindergarten is really part of the school-wide mission to provide children with an experience that helps them become lifelong learners, take risks with their education, and become responsible citizens. But more specifically, it really is our aim to develop a sense of self-efficacy, curiosity, understanding of concepts, and learn about themselves and others. Of course, because this is kindergarten, it's to have fun as well. <laughs> we strongly believe that this only occurs when we maintain a close relationship and partnership with families throughout the year. Janine, I'm going to keep an eye, because sometimes I speak a little too fast, and then you give me a thumbs up or down so that I can slow down, All right. okay? Um, so communication. Communication, effective communication between school parents and teachers is essential to student success. So by getting involved in your child's education, we can together increase their motivation towards learning. We can also help develop their social emotional uh, skills and also help them in having an even more positive attitude towards school in general. And here are some ways that you can learn a little bit more about what's happening at EB and also how to get get involved, become involved in your child's education. Um, you probably all know about the bullet. It's our weekly newsletter. You can access the latest bullet through our website. The parent portal can also be accessed through the parent, uh, to, through our website. You just go to community, community login and then parent portal. If you don't have a login yet, uh, please send an email to tech at uv.br and they will get you uh, connected to the parent portal, okay? So through the parent portal, you will have access to uh, important information, and such as uh, the lunch menu as well, if you're interested, and what's uh, Joe's latest news, and club the activities, activities that are happening at EV, and also how you can support EV uh, with some of your personal skills. Um, as we have mentioned before, our school and classroom, uh, classroom website, uh, we will be sending information to you soon regarding this, hopefully by the end of the week. Yeah. And email. I think all of us were very good with emails, responding emails, and it's a very good way to communicate with us. We would, however, like to stress that during school hours, we're going to be with your students, with your, with your child. So please do not expect us to answer an email during that, uh, those, the, uh, that, those hours. However, we are welcome to schedule uh, meetings through emails, okay? And if there ever is an urgent issue, you can always contact Paola in our lower school office. She will always get communication to classroom mm -hmm. teachers yep. and security about any changes they have. So pick up time, for example, if somebody different is going to be picking up your child that day, um, send an email to lower school, uh, to Paola in the lower school office and she will let us know, okay? Face-to-face -face communication, we would like to ask you um, that arrival and dismissal moments are used for quick communications only. And then again, we are welcome to schedule longer uh, meetings about more uh, uh, serious issues at any time, okay? Communication folders, these will be going home every day and they should be returned to school as well. And you're welcome to leave notes in the folders for us, okay? From us, you'll see things like the report, a report card, events, or flyers that are going in. So we encourage you to check this every day as well. Um, Parent-teacher conferences will be held twice uh, a year. One in October and the other one in March. Um, a primary area in our kindergarten curriculum is the social-emotional development. So in the early years, children are still learning about their identity, others, how to respect and understand the feelings of others, and also how to interact uh, in groups. 
So at this age and stage of development, uh, most uh, experiences are going to be built around their own interests and abilities because typically they are unable to take the perspectives of others. Uh, Jonathan and I, we sometimes call it the it's all about me phase. And so with this in mind, we will be creating an environment and learning experiences that will uh, help children regulate their own emotions and behavior, also help them participate constructively in group settings, and also how to maintain positive relationships. Another way, actually, another way, sorry, that uh, we will be uh, doing this year is helping them in uh, helping them meet our school-wide goal as an EB learner, which would include um, that they are uh, engaged in their own education, that they are contributors to the learning that's going on uh, in the classroom and in their lives. Also, that they can work in group, they can collaborate. And am I missing one? Yeah, citizens of the world. Yeah. Citizens. Mm -hmm. So Angie mentioned the social emotional part of our curriculum, which is a huge part of kindergarten, as many of you know. Another component is the academics. Um, academics, uh, we know that young children learn best through play, and that can be imaginative play, large motor play, construction play, games, even within academic settings. And for this reason, we see even academics occurring throughout all points. So you see components of literacy, mathematics, or science at morning meeting, or even when children are arriving. But then we also do have more substantial periods where you might hear the terms reader's workshop, writer's workshop, or math workshop. Come on in. And this is because um, this is really an approach that we have that children um, that allow children to develop at varying rates. Young children have a range of abilities, and in order to meet the needs of all learners, a workshop model really allows children to construct understandings over time of different concepts. In a classroom, that might look like during math time, different tables, or what we call stations, of children working together on a similar skill or a different um, a different level of an ability but then learning from each other or teaching another student and then coming back at the end of each period or day to share knowledge. This is a way that children really can synthesize and get a better understanding of a concept or a topic, but again, that it's something over time. No, no lesson or activity in kindergarten or in any early childhood program classroom here is isolated to one day or one instance. Children need reinforcement and to be able to review activities um, in order to really have a greater sense. Um, and in terms of collaboration, Angie and I are really excited about the opportunities. As Joe mentioned, our new classrooms really afford us opportunities. A, we have a door that connects the physical classroom, so it's very likely to see children coming in and out during different periods. Um, you saw a picture of our new canteen and high commons area. We're looking forward to doing larger group activities there. Um, but also the way in which we teach together. So that looks like planning together about topics, helping each other with different skills or uh, strengths that we have as educators, and then working with children. So that sometimes children might be grouped together based on certain um, abilities, but also it's really likely that they could be based, work, uh, grouped together based on their interests. So if we're having a study group or an activity or a project that children are interested in, learning about bears or a topic within science, we can have those six to eight children working in one group while another group or three other groups are doing a different focus. But everyone's having a great time and learning in kindergarten soon. And another example of that is even just those tables that Joe was mentioning that are flexible. So we can move those around day to day. And it's not just us moving those around, it's the children as well. We think we should set up the room this way this week because we have a big project. So they're really empowered and participating in their own learning. Um, as a school, we use a, a curriculum tool called Atlas Rubicon. It's a way that us as professionals are able to map or plan out our curriculum um, and look quarter to quarter. But it's also a tool that is available to families. So there's information online that if you're ever interested in standards and objectives that the school uses, that information is available to you. In the coming months, we, on our class website, you will see quarterly kind of summaries about general topics that we're doing within, we're working on or exploring within literacy, mathematics, science, so that you can always be aware of what's happening in the classroom, possibly reinforce at home, and if you have questions, we always want that. Again, it is a partnership with all of us. I am going to go quickly back to communication. Uh, when we talk about collaboration, uh, the Brazilian department uh, is also working very closely uh, with us. And I am very sorry, I was supposed to 
give a little break so that uh, the music could also talk to you a little bit about communication, which is very similar. So that's why I'm going back. Sorry, the music. I falar sobre comunicação e falar sobre dois pontos que é de suma importância. A gente gostaria de pedir a colaboração para que vocês acompanhassem diariamente a vida escolar do aluno, que vocês favorecessem o máximo de atividades autônomas para que essa autonomia ela depois vai ser refletida ali na, na alfabetização, que vocês nos informassem, né, dessem para a gente um feedback dos avanços ou das dificuldades observadas em casa também e que nos informassem quando a criança vai precisar se ausentar da escola, para que a gente possa ajudar né, no planejamento que ele venha a perder nos dias que ele estiver ausente. E a respeito do portal, o Departamento de Português também vai ter um website onde todos os eventos e, e as datas dos eventos que aconteceram no departamento estarão contidas nesse website, só que ele ainda está em construção. Então, logo vocês receberão a data e como acessar o direitinho. <risos> Bom, é, os principais objetivos, né, voltados para o que faz desenvolver a competência linguística, nós temos como foco a oralidade, a ampliação do vocabulário, a comunicação, a organização do pensamento e a compreensão dos fatos e todas essas habilidades, elas ajudam muito na aquisição do processo da escrita. Então, praticamente durante todo esse ano, e mais especificamente no primeiro semestre, a gente vai trabalhar bastante com a questão da competência linguística. É, ampliar as relações sociais. É, ajudar a criança a articular né, os seus interesses com os interesses dos colegas, aprender a ceder, aprender a opinar ou a discordar. Então, a gente trabalha muito com essas questões sociais também. Uh, explorar o ambiente com atitudes de curiosidade. A gente ajuda a criança a entender que ela é parte integrante do, do ambiente, que ela é um sujeito ativo. Então, que as suas atitudes são importantes e que elas transformam o ambiente em que elas estão inseridas e, portanto, é, é, a gente mostra para elas a necessidade de que as suas atitudes sejam positivas. Uh, utilizar as diferentes linguagens, corporal, musical, leitura, escrita, então, nós não só damos acesso a essas variadas linguagens, tipos de linguagem, como a gente ajuda a criança a identificar qual ou quais delas, dessas linguagens elas se saem melhor, elas se identificam mais. Bom, uh, o nosso currículo ele é permeado por temas norteadores. Então, a gente trabalha com temas como amizade, família, trabalhamos muito com as datas comemorativas, 7 de setembro, dia da árvore. E por meio desses temas, nós trabalhamos com atividades bem lúdicas. Então, as nossas aulas são permeadas com músicas, jogos, brincadeiras e muita atividade também de coordenação motora fina. Pintar, cortar, recortar, porque isso também ajuda muito no processo da escrita, né? Quando for para a alfabetização propriamente dita. E aí, no segundo semestre, nós já vamos fazer uma breve introdução para a alfabetização. Então, a partir de janeiro, nós vamos mostrar, identificar as vogais, algumas consoantes e relacionar os sons, os seus respectivos sons em português também. Porque aí na primeira série eles já vão com uma base boa, bem consolidada, para a gente poder aprofundar cada vez mais os conteúdos. Não no primeiro semestre, por conta que acontece isso em inglês, então para a gente não, não chocar e não confundir muito a cabecinha das crianças, então a gente deixa essa introdução apenas para o segundo semestre. Bom, a nossa proposta de trabalho curricular também está no Atlas. É, tem um link que já foi disponibilizado no Bullet e lá está descrito todos os critérios avaliadores de que maneira as crianças serão avaliadas, né? O seu desempenho acadêmico, a questão né, do envolvimento e da participação. As, as habilidades, oral, escrita, leitura e compreensão, como eu disse anteriormente, as aulas interdisciplinares. Nós trabalhamos simultaneamente os conteúdos de português com os de VSS. E, assim como no inglês, a gente também tem uma assistente em sala de aula para nos dar esse suporte e trabalhar junto com as crianças. Dentro do departamento de português, nós temos um projeto literário muito importante, muito interessante. Ele tem o objetivo de incentivar o prazer e o hábito da leitura. Então, semanalmente, as crianças levam para casa um livro literário e uma atividade relacionada a esse livro, para que em família vocês possam fazer a leitura e, e uma 
uma atividade. E aí a criança na semana seguinte, ela traz para a turma, apresenta para os colegas ou qual foi o trabalhinho que eles realizaram. É muito importante porque ajuda nesse processo né, da leitura e da escrita. Então, quando vocês estiverem lendo, não leiam só para as crianças, mas leiam com elas, passando dedinho em cima das letras, das palavras, para que aos poucos elas comecem a identificar e decodificar qual letrinha faz o som correspondente, isso ajuda muito. Semanalmente elas vão levar o um livrinho e vai junto um bilhete também, explicando detalhadamente como que vai ser desenvolvida essa atividade, e na semana seguinte elas devolvem. Bom, o Home Learning é um projeto já instituído pela escola desde o ano passado, nós vamos começar a instituir no Departamento de Português a partir desse ano. Trata-se de um projeto onde as crianças ficam à vontade para escolher um tema e de que maneira ela vai abordar esse tema. Então, vamos supor que uma criança goste muito de dinossauros e aí ela quer apresentar para os colegas o que ela sabe, as curiosidades que ela sabe sobre dinossauros. Então, vai para casa a data do dia da apresentação e a família ajuda a criança a desenvolver o projeto e aí ela vai ter mais ou menos uns 5 minutos para falar sobre esse assunto. Então, ela escolhe de que maneira ela vai apresentar, seja por meio de um cartaz, um livro, um slide, é livro, justamente para ajudar a criança nessas questões de, de preparação. E vocês serão informados também das datas, de, de, né, das apresentações de cada uma das crianças. A respeito dos materiais, no português a gente trabalha com uma pasta verde, Nessa pasta é justamente para o projeto literário, né? vai uma vez por semana e livrinho com a atividade. E em sala a gente tem um caderno de desenho, sem pauta, para que a gente possa justamente trabalhar as, as, as atividades de coordenação motora firme. E os livros literários, que ficam vários na sala, eles sentem a vontade para escolher e levar para casa também. Esse é o meu e-mail aqui em azul e é por meio dele que nós vamos nos comunicar e agendar os nossos... É, encontros para falar sobre o desenvolvimento acadêmico dos filhos de vocês. Muito obrigada. PLL. Uh, PLL stands for Portuguese Language Learners and I'll be speaking English because our population is mostly the international uh, parents and students of our school. So mostly all the international key uh, students come to me. The Brazilian ones go to Denise. And it, might, it may happen that some international students that have already shown some proficiency in Portuguese, they, might, they may attend Portuguese with the Brazilian students. And the other way too, it, it may happen that a Brazilian student um, spends some time abroad didn't get a lot of proficiency in Portuguese and they don't have enough skills, so they will come to me for a certain time. So I'll be mostly working with international students. Our goals are enable students to communicate in Portuguese within and beyond the school setting. And I try to do this in a fun way, respecting their time and will to express themselves. I don't want to force them to speak as soon as they can I let it, um, you know, I give them time. I really want them to feel comfortable and to speak when they feel comfortable to, and confident to do it, okay? Get familiar with Brazilian culture. This is something that I do in the classroom. Since they are in Brazil, it's very beneficial for them to get advantage of it and learn about our host country. Show evidence of becoming lifelong learners using the language for personal enjoyment and re enrichment. So we want them to use language not only for academic, uh, in the academic settings. We want them to be able to help you out with the Portuguese when you go to the supermarket, when you go to a snack bar, everywhere, inside and outside the school. Um, our curriculum, you can take a look. It was, it's on Atlas Rubicon through the website, school website, you have your login. You can take a look at our units and all the quarters as well as the standards and benchmarks that were uh, based on this ECTFL, which are standards for foreign language learning. Um, I use a lot of technology, music, games, and concrete activities. Since they are just five years old, it's their first contact with the foreign language, it needs to be fun. Okay, so, you, sorry? You, sorry. Pode falar. Para a que vão falar português. 
So, so as I was telling you, they are five. It's their first for most of them. It's their first contact with a foreign language. So we want it to have to be fun and natural. So by uh, using concrete activities, it happens naturally. What kind of concrete activities do we have? Uh, if you're learning fruit, we're making a fruit salad. If you're learning about foods, we are having a picnic. So you might get some notes home sometimes saying, please send two apples, please send an orange. So we, we have a you know, contributive classroom and we can have some stuff together. Um, they come to class every day for 45 minutes. So it's a good amount of time for them to be exposed to the language. And we have, sometimes we have two levels because students learn at different times. So we might have PLL, let's say beginners and intermediate students. And I will differentiate instruction for them. Okay. Uh, if you need to talk to me, this is my email. Please feel free, feel free to contact me if you want to learn more about the program. Don't hesitate to email me. Our classroom is downstairs. It's beautiful, it's getting ready. But I'll be very glad to be meeting you whatever you want. Thank you. So at EAB, we really value collaboration at all levels. It's not just at a grade level team, but we really work vertically as well. We're lucky to have a team of professionals and specialists this year that include a school psychologist, counselor, literacy specialist, our principal, that work together with teachers to, again, continue to meet the needs of all learners. Sometimes this might look like general class instruction, but it also may be that a teacher is needing alternative strategies or supports to support a learner and a student. This is a team that can uh, work with the classroom teacher to be more creative or have other alternative ideas and approaches. And again, it's a really dynamic group uh, that we found really great success with. Um, overall, Deborah Santos is the contact person for the what you'll hear is the student success team. And if you ever have questions about this group or approach, you're welcome to speak with us or contact Deborah directly. Um, so before we finish, we would like to offer you some reminders regarding arrival time. It is very important for your child to arrive to school on time uh, so that they can ease and gently to the classroom routine. And we ask for your support with this and we would love to work together to make sure that we can make the beginning of the, their class as positive as, uh, as possible. Arrival time, we think of just like a morning for us as well, for adults, is one of the most critical and central pieces of the day. If we don't have a positive morning, sometimes the whole day, even as adults, can be a challenge, or we're feeling a little negative or upset, or it takes us longer to kind of pick up that energy and momentum. The same is with children. There might be some children that, we're, that we have in K-5 that are continuing to adjust to school, become familiar with it, and for them it might be a little difficult for some days to arrive at school, say goodbye to a, fam a parent or a family member, but even for a child that is successfully entering and not even remembering that mom or dad or someone's dropping them off, it's still almost equally as important that they're having that time. That, the arrival time for our classroom is a time that children are playing with an activity, reviewing the schedule to kind of mentally and emotionally prepare themselves for the day, making connections with new friends, or maintaining friendships. It also then allows us, when it is time to start our day, which is usually at 8, um, eight o'clock or 9 o'clock, to be ready to focus and learn in a different way. Um, and so with arrival time comes the morning goodbyes, which sometimes is still a little difficult in kindergarten. And we ask for your support to um, talk to your child so you can start doing this outside of the classroom. So that once they enter the classroom environment, they are ready, uh, they have their mindset for school. Okay. Uh, we will be having two snacks in kindergarten this year, so one the first snack is going to be at 9.20 in the morning, the other one at the end of the day at 2.45. So we would like to ask you to send in uh, enough snack for both snack periods. Um, on PE days, uh, remember to send in your uh, child with appropriate uniform and also uh, sneakers. Okay. Water bottles. It's very dry right now. We can see that some of our kids are already suffering with the dryness and we will always be stimulating and asking them to drink lots of water during the day. Yes, Paloma. Perfect. Great, great. 
So we, I said 9.20 because uh, our snack time used to be at 10.25 and that was very close.